Hi there, I'm Matt Montgomery. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of the state of Illinois for Pioneer. And today I want to get a little ahead of a topic that I think will become a topic, a point of discussion as we go towards harvest and as you begin to take a look at your fields in central and west central Illinois. To do that first though, I want to remind you of the growing season we've experienced incredible amounts of rainfall in the spring that literally pushed us to the 11th hour the back end of the planting window the very tail end of planting of the planting possibility for us this growing season and therefore moved a significant portion of this crop's reproduction to historically stressful periods of time along with that we then saw a july where the rainfall shut off we saw a lot of stressful conditions upon this crop at that point, to the point that we actually had leaves begin to roll out in the field. And then August came in and poured a mountain of rainfall upon the crop as well. In some locations, over the course of a week and a half, two weeks time, in the two territories that I cover, people sometimes had a few to several inches of rain. We pummeled this crop with a lot of moisture. And I want you to keep that in mind because I think it predisposes us to elevated levels of this. I have a healthy ear right here, healthy husk, and you can see here we have the husk very tightly bound to the ear itself. We have evidence of an ear that's suffering from ear rot. And I think you're gonna see elevated levels of this, this growing season because of those positive conditions for ear rots to appear. Expect that to happen. It's gonna be a little bit elevated this year, purely because of the environment that we had to deal with. Now there's nothing we can do about this, but I do wanna remind you of something. And that is that oftentimes we notice these ear rots a little bit more prevalent along the field edge. There are various explanations for that. And I'm not sure we've ever really settled upon one great explanation for why that happens. Some people make the argument that inoculum is blowing in from outside, hitting that field edge, that's why you see it there first. Other people make the argument that insects like Japanese beetles tend to hit that part of the field first, damage the ear, provide an entry point, allow us to get that disease. Other people make the argument that the insects themselves, maybe even their little hairs on their body, help facilitate the movement of those spores that cause ear rot and move that thing around. Regardless, we oftentimes do notice more of this along the field edge. So I want you to keep that in mind for two reasons. Number one, as we begin to harvest, if you hit a spot with elevated levels and it's along the field edge, you might wanna even think about segregating that off, delivering it as a separate entity, doing something different with that, getting the dock out of the way first. The other thing though, more important before then, if we tend to see elevated levels of ear rot along the field edge, we have to keep that in mind as we go out and scout. I would encourage you not to stop just a few rows in and look at ear rot and evaluate ear rot there. You need to go beyond the end, end rows and well beyond that into the heart of that field, which gives you an idea of actually what's happening in the field itself. That will give you the real perspective on what's happening with ear rot. Expect the end rows to have a lot, maybe a lot more elevated than what you're used to. Expect there to be a little bit elevated level within the field itself, but don't get over anxious about what you see along that field edge. Look inside, take that good survey, use that to evaluate the situation. Well, thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.